Logonosoaps.com. I'm Kristen Burt. You know her as Dr. Lisa Obrecht on General Hospital. And we are so excited to have Kathleen Gauti with us today because she's celebrating an exciting career milestone. Kathleen, so good to see you. It's wonderful to see you too. Thank you for having me. I want to say congratulations. I know that you are celebrating 10 years of your debut on General Hospital. Yeah, that's, I, I'm just, I'm like, where did the 10 years go? It just started recently. I was in, came in for two episodes and went home and was working on other shows on, and got a call to come. I was working on, actually on Arrow. I was up in Vancouver working on Arrow and they were, I got a call to come back. I'm like, okay, <laughs> really? Okay. And you're going to have a daughter. I will. <laughs> Kelly Pebo, <gasps> I, the beautiful daughter. Thank you. <laughs> so. Well, was, I love that. And you know, th these are the great stories too, especially coming out of daytime. They call you in for a couple of episodes. And I had heard, I think I read somewhere on the internet and I'm like, tell us if this is true. I heard that it was Tony Geary who said, you know, hey, she's fantastic. Let's bring her in for more. From what I believe and understand, and I've been told that's true. That's exactly what happened. I was working, Tony and I had the storyline. We were trying to find, he was playing Dr. Von Schimmerman. I mean, we had so much fun making fun of the names and the accents. And he said, what's, who are you? And I told him I had recently come from, I was in New York for 10 years, trained and worked there. And then I went to Hungary for two months to do a film and I stayed for six years. So it just had, <laughs> wow. I just, it was a little detour on my way to Hollywood. And um, so I just told him the whole story that I was working there, awards I got, and the films and television shows. And just, he was asking about that because he's also lives in Europe. And mm -hmm. so we're, we're sharing stories and, and uh, he's, and then we we were having such a good time, and he's and he's working together. And he said, "He seems so calm. How is it?" And I was like, "Oh, maybe on the outside, but on the inside, it's like a chicken with his head cut off." <laughs> <laughs> and he was said me too. So it, it, we bonded really well. Super nice guy, talented, kind, wonderful actor to work with. And from what I understand, he went to Frank Valentini and said pay attention to this girl and you know hang around keep her around and frank was just awesome and and ron carlovati and chris van in there they wrote this character and they kept developing and developing and they found out that i could sing so they wrote some fun things for me to sing and then they found out that i had danced because my background is ballet musical theater tons of theater i did i've done 167 plays i kept count since i was three just you know over the years and tons of theater in new york and in europe and in canada and all over and uh so we did a lot of theatrical stuff they gave me and that was so much fun to do like the nurses ball and then they kept they wrote some comedy because i've done a lot of comedy and then they wrote drama when i've done drama so it was just such a the role is just so i've been so fortunate with as dr lise lobrecht kathleen gatti as dr lise lobrecht doing this this great oeuvre i mean from a to z I get to do everything. So it's a very satisfying role. Um, as long as I don't have to say the same thing over and over for three years, otherwise I'll shoot myself. But otherwise it's really fun because <laughs> you know I really get to do everything. And you know, from from very dramatic with the children and open, warm and loving to this evil, you know, stabbing, killing. It's like what a, it's a huge variety. Of, well, that's of what I love about your character too, because she really started out as like just pure evil and has evolved through the years, which is incredible because that shows character growth. We love that. But on the page, when you first got that script for those first couple of episodes, how was she described and how did you bring her to life? Um, I, I'm, I also coach actors and when I tell them, it's like, it doesn't matter if you have one line or a million lines, or it's a one day role or a series regular, you bring everything that you can. Each line is important. I had a wonderful blind teacher. I'm deviating a little. I always do that. My husband says, you go all over the place, but I'll come back to your answer question. <laughs> I had a blind teacher and he said, even if it's one line or a million lines, it just be natural, be honest, be organic, be present. And it's an important. And each line has value. So give everything value. Not just mean it has to be big or broad, but it has to be, it has to have value. Writers on a show and anything, they don't write just to write because that's just normal life. They don't write normal life, the life, life, life. They elevate it slightly. So it's always something important. It's like, this is high stakes. So everything has value. So when I came in, it was just two two days to play. It's, it was a uh, the head of the psychiatric, I believe this, if I'm not mistaken, it's been 10 years, but um, the head of the psychiatric, ward i think at, at this clinic or the head of the clinic actually and she had my character had been 
uh, take a header medical license revoked for experimenting on people. Oopsie. Oops. So, you know, <laughs> it was fun. But so you read about what the character is, what the other characters say about you, you know, what what is expected of, you know, sort of the the whole color and design of that character and and then the lines basically also feed you know tell you it's like oh this person is here we keep them there and i was working opposite ian buchanan who's just a joy to work with and and you know so whatever an actor gives you you take that and you respond to that so i had these great actors i was surrounded by it enriched my performance and when you can also bring your truth and open, be open and give and receive, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes you're not in the right mood, they're not in the right mood. So there isn't that give and take, but there was tons of give and take with Ian Buchanan was like, ah, bringing this. And then Tony Geary was doing all this fun stuff. So I got to do a lot of different things with them. But meanwhile, it basically was just dark, evil, conniving. You know, <laughs> kind of. I, I wanna ask this though, because I always think that the great villains Liesl being one of them too, but it's, you have to have a small thread of humanity. Otherwise they're yes. just evil and you hate them and you want them to go away and never to come back to Port Charles. So where did you find that small thread of humanity when she was so villainous at the start? There was no humanity in the beginning that I didn't yes. see it. I didn't find it. It wasn't written. And that wasn't my job. I was there to do some evil and dark things. Later, it came out that it was, well, Cesar had forced me to it. Well, you know, but the humanity in Obrecht, and I'm grateful to the writers for that, uh, came with the family mm. because there was the children and her realization that she had messed up. And the, you know, you confront your, your history, your past and your truth and you go, I made many mistakes. And that, not that she, she sits in them into those mistakes too long. She's like, oh, okay, well, you know, so like smoke Next, a cigarette, move on. on. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I guess I did give up my child. And I guess I did that one, abuse her and treat her terribly. But oh, I'll sing a song always on my mind. I never forgot about you. You are always on my mind. <laughs> now it's okay. Well, okay, maybe it's not that fast, but those were healing and the, and the comedy that I'm allowed to do and the humor and the music and some and the dance, you know, that has softened the edges of her. So I feel like every time it goes dark, 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 I'm like, oh, there we go off the show. Because when you get too dark, I guess they paint you in a corner and then you're gone. And then I get some humor. I'm like, OK, phew, save for another month or whatever, you know, it is. So those, those moments of humanity, I think, are, are definitely with the family because Obrecht is a very sort of stylized, campy, broad, uh, I don't want to say superficial, but there isn't, she, she, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know how we're certain people and you're like, oh, hello, hello, like air kissing. But you know, when there's like somebody you really care about, someone you love, you let down your guard, you open your heart briefly sometimes. Yes, you know, that authenticity shines through all of a sudden. Like, oh, there she is. Which is rare. And Obrecht, rare, you know, I, 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 as an actress, I treasure those moments because I love playing the pathos of a character, the depth, the height, the crazy, you know, all of it. But, but when Obrecht can let down her guard, just briefly, I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you, writers. A little bit of me. softness. It's a little bit of softness. Yes, yeah. When, when her son was shot, Nathan and I operated with the rubber. I thought it was so funny. The rubber scalpel. I mean, I make a terrible doctor. It's so fun. People are like, oh, you should be back in the hospital. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I have to like bandage uh, Cameron, you know, Drew, Carrie with like give an injection. And I'm like, oh, I hate needles. I hate bandages, blood. I, I pass out. And it's so funny. And I'm playing this doctor. I'm like, please don't. So I had this rubber scalpel and he had been shot. Nathan had been shot. And I, the mother, performed surgery on her son. How ethical is that? But no, no, not <laughs> ethical at all. But Obrecht, <laughs> it was perfect. Obrecht is so unethical. So I don't, I'm the doctor. I'm doing what I, you know, just, I don't care. I'm doing it anyways. My son. And this rubber scalpel is like bending. And I'm like, oh, my, oh it's so funny. And we had somebody there from the emergency room. I mean, they brought in a professional to kind of guide me and coach me, which was great. So I, I did want to say one thing that, well, lots of things, but but one thing is that it's so funny because I'm like 10 years, I'm so grateful. It's been fantastic. And the fans, first of all, thank you for having me and thank you to the fans. It's, you guys are just, without that, without the love and support of the fans, I wouldn't still be here. But I, I, I posted 10 years and then Tin Shriner, yeah, well, you know, I'm 45 years. I'm like, wow you win i'm like i can't even, I'm, win. <laughs> I'm not competing i'm just shocked that i'm here for 10 years i've never been anywhere for 10 years and um and, and then rebecca herb she's been there i think 25 years I'm like 
I'm like a baby. There's nothing. <laughs> but it's this still is an infant just... anniversary for you. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's like, well, you know, I've been there 45. I'm like, you win. You win. I thought totally you win. <laughs> I want to know just because your character has evolved so much, has the fan reaction changed over the years? Like, what have you seen on social media toward Obrecht? Initially was a lot of hatred. And I went, I guess that's good. And it was so interesting because I thought the best role, my dream role in my younger acting days was like, oh, the Waltons, Mrs. Walton. I oh, so charming. Was, yes. Lovely. Warm, kind, loving. Nobody cares. I mean, I, I'm finding out that when you're nice, you're like, nah. when you're evil and dark, I mean, I, I was like, they're really going to hate me. And I got a lot of hate, which is expected. But then people were really loving it they're like yeah get him get him and and what's kind of cool is because initially i thought i'm just playing a dark person but there was there was always like something a reason behind it like most of obrecht's darkness is well founded there's been a few gratuitous kidnappings and poisonings and killings and things like that but just, just a few but the rest of all just, just a morsel her so doctor far. history no big deal just, <laughs> Never. Yeah, I want <laughs> details, you know. Yeah, but but um but but the other time, but I think they're, you know, I I, I think the, the fans have been really supportive of the whole thing. And so initially it was pretty dark. And then again, as the writers kind of morphed this character and they were like, Oh my god, she can dance, it's so fun. And she sings and it's fun, she's funny. And I went, because oh, there is that connection with the, the audience. There really is. Yep. It, especially in soap operas. I've been on other shows it's you know series regular whatever you you're on once a week for a season 20 26 episodes here it's like 250 episodes so i'm not on every day i'll do 50 to 80 episodes a year somewhere in there but the fans really take this personally and we are become their family you know we are their family we're, we're in their tv sets every day five days a week then we get to meet them at events which i love and then it's reversed now we get to meet you you know you guys the fans are come back. So it's a very uh, wonderfully symbiotic relationship. So when the fans go, we, you know, we hate you, but now we love to hate you. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that, that really means a lot. And, you know, and the fans love to hate, I think is a good place to be. It's a good place. Love to hate. Yeah. We hate you. Yeah. But, you know, and I'm getting a lot of stuff now too. People are saying, you know, in the beginning, you really hated you, but now we love to hate you. And, and now we love you. And it's like, it, it, it's a very personal Thing. And, you know, it's like my father was a symphony conductor and he would do these great concerts. He, I, I think he was truly one of the great conductors and he would take a medium, mediocre symphony and turn them into incredible, incredible orchestra performances. And the music was incredible. And he would get reviews and some of them were really shitty and, <laughs> and then some were amazing. And, and he said, you know what, you take these reviews you take the bad ones, you throw them out, you take the good one, you put it in your back pocket. Every time it's a crappy review, you throw it out, you take out the good one, you're like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I no remember like me. <laughs> well, my parents have been gone a long time, but I, I remember that. So, you know, but fortunately, I haven't had that dark hatred from fans that I've seen for other actors. And it's like, guys, we're playing, we're actors, we don't write this, we just, our job, we're paid to say the lines, put our heart and soul into it and perform it. And then some act, you know, some, some fans, some viewers really take it personally and blame the actors. And it's like, you can blame me if I suck at, if, if I'm not doing a good job, mm -hmm. but the, the material isn't mine. I just, it's my job to just do what lift it off the page and present it in an acceptable way. Right. So and, and you know, and the, there's storylines that they've had mapped out and it, you don't have control. You can't go in and go, I don't want this storyline. We want to go this way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't. I, I, one of my favorite moments was I, w I was sitting in jail uh, with Sonny, was in the other jail, uh, other jail cell. And I'm singing, singing O Tannenbaum. I think I'd just been caught for, who knows? I've been in jail so many times. I don't remember what I did then, but something bad. And I was, it was Christmas and I was sitting there you know, sad and singing all by myself, a cappella. Anyway, finish the day. It, it was good. It, it was a very special scene. I always like this, like deep, again, those deep, sad moments is because there's somewhere is something you can grow from. And I go to like pack up the end of the day, you just pack up and leave. There's no, there isn't 
because of the speed, and I call this a factory, but it really is a factory. You come in, you do your job, next, go on. It's not like theater, the audience, oh, you did such a great job, we love you. you go to oh. the stage door, you can meet people there, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Like moving on, it's like, okay, huh. poured my heart out, okay, whatever. That was, you know, that was my best <laughs> performance I've ever done, but okay. So you, I went up to the parking, and washed my face off, put my clothes on, I was out in the parking a lot to get in my car, and I see Frank Valentin, this is Christmas, right before the break, and he goes, just so you know, you're going to be the head of the hospital, the chief of staff in January, when you come after the holidays, I'm like, what? You know, it like, was when I get out of jail. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you're getting out because I think the story was like I bought Cesar or something. They paid 80 million so I could I could become the chief of staff. They bought me a position. Again, I don't quite remember all the details, but it was like, really? So from the depths of prison in this blue, you know, blue prison garb, singing sadly to myself, I'm alone and oh ton and bomb and so like, Oh, the chief of staff. I mean, I love that. Those things are so fun to me. It was like, what? You know, so I, I really, to me, every time I get a script, it's like a Christmas present because there's so many, a lot of times, there's so many changes. You know, one day you're here, the next day you're here. Now you're in love with this person. Now you're going to stab this person. Now you're going to kill this person. Now you're going to poison this one over and over and over, or if not blame him. You know, so it's really fun. It's kind of, it's a really unique experience.